want enough cover so that we can burn it, but how much is enough? Like this here hasn't been grazed. We've got cows on the other side. So about how much do you need fuel to burn? So what we're looking for on a burn is a consistent enough fuel. So it has to get from one leaf of one plant to the leaf of the other plant. <clears throat> so in a savanna area, what we're trying to do is get the base of this plant hot enough to where we'll kill him. And you can see the last time we burned, this is the same tree and the same sprout. We killed this sprout a couple years ago when we burned it with fire. Now this here has grown back off the same root system and we need to top kill him again. So that's what we're trying to do. And in order to top kill him again, <clears throat> we need to get this layer of bark right around here hot enough to mess up it may ability to move water and nutrients up and down through its system. So we got to get through the cambium layer, which is a very thin layer. We're down to the actual wood right now. So that we're through the bark and into the live wood. And then the center, any wood underneath this further down into the tree is already dead. That's old year's growth. The layer we're trying to kill will be this layer right here. <laughs> and I can't remember the exact, you can Google it, figure it out. I think it's about 130 degrees. If we can achieve that temperature right at on that layer through that bark, we will top kill this tree. Um, so that's our goal. So to do that, keep in mind we're in a savanna, so we won't burn this till winter time, and we're going to get dead leaves that fall off of the trees to kind of filter down here and land in the grass too. So that'll add to our fuel load as these leaves come off in the fall. But we have to get, here's a trail where cattle have been going up and down the hill from the last graze. Fire has to be able to burn this side and cross over to this side in order to get to this tree. So as we do our graze this time, we're really looking to just kind of take the top out of things, leave plenty of growth there to carry the fire, and also we're later part of August. So we're going to get some regrowth back in August. We're gonna get a little bit in the first part of September, and then it's gonna kind of be over. So basically, we might put half again the fuel load back of what's here going through, excuse me, going through uh, this fall. But we're basically, you've got the fuel you're gonna get, except for the tree leaves that'll fall off this fall. Okay. So as we, as we graze this, we're looking for our uniformity, not harsh grazed pockets of grass, um, and just moving them before we get a lot of trailing and effects like that. So we're kind of doing about one day moves. Uh, we'll see, we may do a two day move. That's what we're here to figure out is how long to graze this first section. We just put them in here. And so I'm figuring that out. If you want to just kind of look at the grass here, we've kind of knocked some of this down as we went through it. But you can tell we've got grass in here that's, for the most part, has actual vegetative blades up to about a pocket knife in my pocket, about 30 inches. And it will step over our hot wire. And this is where the cattle were at just this morning. They're still here. And you can see they've eaten this one off. He's, here was a high T. He, this blade hasn't been ate off and this one hasn't, but this one has. So they've removed about 10 inches, 12 inches of growth off of the side of this plant. And if all the plants look like that, it would be about time to move. They're going to come back through and which ones they bite again, which ones they don't. They've removed some growth off of this. Um, but we still, you can tell we have plenty of fuel. With clump to clump, we'll get plenty of fire to go across here. We don't have a lot of trailing that I see that's going to make a trail. We have to light down both sides of it. So really, I think we've about accomplished our goal. I think we could probably leave them for another another full grace period, another six hours, or we could move them now. We could probably leave them even until tomorrow morning. Uh, it's a fairly large area we got them in. So what they're going to impact, if they double this impact, we'll still have plenty of fire. Okay. But this time of year, we've got a world of forage. I've got more grass than I know what to do with. We've had a lot of rain. Our year could have been different, but this is the one we're in. So I'm adapting my grazing to say, 
let's, let's put some weight on the cows. Let's keep them in good shape. It, we're at the tail end of our breeding season. Let's just keep things going good, put some more fat on them for winter. We might have a cold, long, wet winter. I don't know. You and I were talking earlier that they've eaten, like on your side, on the side that have got cows on, most of the blue stem, but they've left like the drop seed and uh, what was the other one that we were saying? Uh, the prairie drop seed switchgrass? Yes. <laughs> prairie drop seed and the switchgrass up there hasn't been touched, but all this blue stem has. So are you just going to let them keep grazing up there? Or are they going to come back and really graze down this blue stem before they even touch anything else? It's all about preference at this point. We just put the cows in here, so I compare it to kids that just walked into a candy store. They started with their favorite. And so they've been out here. The big blue that was grazed last time, is the most vegetative this time. So that's what they're looking for and they're selecting it out. The drop seed, they don't really like to eat it much till winter or really early spring. So they avoided it last time and as we go up there and look, it looks like it's uh, it'll have a lot of brown in it. It's not vegetative, it's just been allowed to grow and kind of, it's not dormant, but it's so much. It hasn't really been dormant. touched. Right. It doesn't really, it's accomplished. It's it's got his root system charged up, so it's just kind of hanging out now till fall. That's not very palatable to them, so they will avoid it. So to answer your question, if we left them till they graze the drop seed, they would have this bit down, they'd overgraze this. This is what they're wanting to seek out. Um, there's a lot of diversity in here too. Uh, there's a lot of the Desmodiums, and they'll have bit a lot of those off as they went through. And this Can you is- point a, one of those out? Uh, there's a desmodium here um, and there's lots of them in here and they're great for wildlife and cattle really like them and they'll bit several of them off as they come through but this is a very selective grace just letting them it's all out there in front of them they eat it or they don't eat it uh, later as we approach fall and winter we'll start to tighten that grazing up and be less selective because okay. uh, we got a long winter ahead and, and how do you do that uh, just we smaller areas leave them here for longer okay. so if we didn't want there's two ways to tighten that up and one is we leave them in the same size field for a longer period of time or if we feel like for some reason maybe it's really wet or maybe we are getting some regrowth and we don't want to damage the regrowth another way to tighten that up is we'll put them in a we'll make move the poly wire and make the field smaller okay. leave them here for a day but on half as much acreage for okay cool yep I'm Cole Hamilton. I've been here at Hamilton Dave Outpost for 27 plus years managing livestock. Got a lot of practical experience there, but uh, barely graduated high school. I'm Cleo. I graduated from the University of Missouri with a degree in animal science and an emphasis in ruminant nutrition. And I'm here at Hamilton Native Outpost learning how to manage grasslands for the purpose of raising livestock.